Uh, hi, this is Dr. Praveen Saxena and I have been uh, practicing something called environmental medicine and uh, I am a graduate from Usmania Medical College and uh, did my MBBS, post I did my radiology post graduation and uh, I happen to work in something called uh, environmental medicine. Environmental medicine, I will just give you an idea what we try to work it out. We try to work with all pollution induced problems. We try to work a lot on uh, 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 something like autoimmune diseases, cancer and all um, not or not. We try to focus more on um, uh, trying to correct the physiology and treating the biochemistry. Uh, what I can tell you is uh, we are trying to, uh, my concept mostly is on toxicity. If I am able to remove the toxicity, things are getting better. Your cells and your uh, body, your, your, it's going to optimize in a better way. It's not the deficiency of the uh, drugs which we are causing the disease. Uh, instead, inst instead, it is the deficiency or it is the kind of maladjustment of uh, uh, internal milieu because of this toxic waste and all that, lack of oxygen. These are the things which are really a big issue and uh, it's not properly highlighted in when I studied medicine. So, uh, thing, uh, thing what uh, prompted us talking about is uh, uh, this well, last two years it has been very tough. We, we tried for talking about what the other things which we can do for this uh, COVID and all that. Yes, this is a good thing which is I always come uh, kind of uh, um, this is a government has handled the situation so well. Um, when it comes to uh, uh, the decision of taking, uh, giving vaccination for mandatory mass vaccination for the kids, I'm not on the same page. I I'll tell you why. Um, this is something which we have been always uh, trying to understand. And what we have seen uh, is the children has got a robust immunity. You have got something, uh, we need to look into something. You have got thymus. The people who has got thymus, they have got good, good immunity. It's a T-cell immediate immunity. We don't have to rely on B-cell, other things and all antibodies. So what is this particular thing which uh, I felt uh, uh, I need to come and talk was this is this is the picture we need to be better safe that sorry uh, children and young people have all mostly mild or asymptomatic presentation when infected with sars cov they have they are at near zero risk of death from covid 19 there is unusually high rate of reported adverse events and deaths following the covid 19 vaccines compared to other vaccines so where are we? So some adverse infections are particularly something like myocarditis and all, it's bothering, bothering us. And we believe that uh, this is a real uh, problem, it's a challenge and I can always... Um, uh, so with this, where potential harm exists from an innovation or little is said about it, the precautionary principle dictates uh, to, uh, for us that it first do no harm. We need to be on that particular stuff. I can always tell about this myocarditis from uh, this particular thing, which is reported from Sweden and Denmark. Uh, this is uh, uh, this is the kind of uh, myocarditis which was reported, and uh, not just that. Uh, there is a um, uh, the, the the significance of uh, this particular thing is uh, known, and we are trying to uh, see. Uh, I've been talking about uh, something like. What are the adverse uh, uh, effects? There is a thing called VAERS, and there is a proper reporting format which is there followed worldwide. I don't think uh, we are at on the same uh, uh, kind of level playing ground because we don't find much adverse effects which were reported from this part uh, from India, and uh, that is where I believe when everything has been documented. I'm talking about. Uh, up to 27th August 2021, the the COVID deaths of post vaccination so much was recorded, and uh, nothing has been reported. Much has been reported from here. Uh, we do see anecdotal reports, and uh, we do we do have uh, our own assumptions. And uh, this is one thing which we always uh, felt uh, is why should we? Uh, this is a question I would like to put to everyone and uh, which why risk harm from the experimental vaccines when my child 
uh, has near zero risk from COVID-19 and natural immunity is safer than more effective. So I always, uh, this is one thing which is we know about that, there is a thing called uh, uh, spike protein which uh, leads to uh, permanent damage of the heart can always happen and uh, this is one thing which uh, we are always uh, uh, trying to uh, make a point and uh, this is uh, this is this is always open this s1 spike protein is always there in the blood and uh, i don't have to uh, this is uh, see this is uh, something which is already being established and uh, uh, this particular thing rate of myocardial test after two shots of pfizer was 162 cases per million which is quite quite very high and uh, i somewhere uh, as a matter of fact i believe uh, we need to be careful about uh, our kind of thing and uh, yes I want uh, people to understand that these are the things uh, uh, because there are no medium and long term safety data about COVID-19 vaccines it's still lacking and uh, children and young people have have a remaining life expectancy of 55 to 9, 80 years and uh, unknown harmful uh, uh, long term effects are more far more consequential for young than for the elderly so you need to be careful about risk benefit analysis of this particular stuff and um, the thing what i have been talking about is uh, uh, the transmission of covid-19 uh, from uh, children to adults is minimal and adults in contact with children do not have higher covid mortality uh, so it is unethical to uh, put uh, uh, children and young people at risk to protect adults and uh, this is one thing which we always have been talking about um, uh, herd immunity vaccinating children and young people is not necessary um, what happens is that uh, when, when you have seen the model uh, and uh, um, there was a zero positivity test were done in delhi and uh, after the sports the second wave uh, say 80 to 90 percent uh, there was a positivity among the kids who were not even uh, vaccinated so uh, I think we need to take care with a caution and I urge uh, the uh, supreme authorities, uh, the, uh, the people who are into a big, uh, uh, who are really um, concerned citizens as well as uh, I want to talk, I want to tell this to the uh, uh, government uh, as, well, uh, as well as the policy makers not to make it mandatory you can always get away with small uh, people who are uh, having a uh, morbid issues people having a comorbidities you can always go for it giving a mass vaccination is not going to be a real uh, thing and we as medical community from doctors from integrative medicine we somehow we are not on the same page and we believe that uh, things can be can go in a wrong way and uh, this is oh, this is what i'm urging from the government to consider this as a priority thank you